Hey friends, in an earlier episode, we saw how you can work with your Azure Kubernetes service, your AKS clusters with Visual Studio Code. Rong Zhang and Tats Mishra are back once again to show me what's new in the VS Code extension that adds your favorite AKS tools and diagnostics today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Rong and Tats. We're gonna learn more about the AKS VS Code extension. How are you, Rong? Good. How are you, Scott? Hi, Tess. I'm very excited to learn new things. Uh, I'm glad to have you both back. Yeah, we're very happy to come back again as well. And also, we bring a lot of new, exciting things here again. I know that you all are um, improving the AKS code extension a lot. Like this, it's constantly being worked on. So we saw you a couple months ago. We saw a bunch of great features. We thought about some new features, and you're back to show us what's new and what's fresh. In the in the AKS world for VS Code, yeah, definitely. Like uh, you know, today uh, for all of these microservices, container-based applications, we know that developers facing a lot of uh, difficulties as there are many processing configurations are very tedious. But for them, like they really wanted to do you know high uh, high quality coding for the applications. So that's our goal for definitely bring something easier accessible to help them to save those time so they can concentrate to, to the code, uh, to the coding. Uh, so the VS Code AKS extension definitely served this uh, purpose. You know, last time we presented uh, several tools can help developers better uh, configure their Kubernetes, uh, better uh, diagnose their issues on the clusters. And this time uh, we bring in like more stuff uh, for like the easy cluster management. They can do many cluster operation stuff. Um, definitely also some observability tools that are very powerful, but may take like heavy lifting to install those. So we bring the easy access for them to go into these tools without any of this heavy lifting. So they can better to monitor their cluster health, um, better to manage their clusters. So they're able to deploy faster, um, use AKS better, and then by and then having like a very healthy uh, application runnings. Uh, so yeah, so I'll have Taz to give like a little bit more detailed demo to show you guys how this fancy feature works. Yeah, Taz. Thank you, Ron. Thanks a lot, Scott. Um, I'll, I think um, this is going to be a very amazing in terms of the built up from the part one. So the first feature I'll show is the create cluster from Azure portal. This is an easy access to the Azure portal. So we have deep linked the uh, portal experience. So for the people who want to uh, create their cluster uh, via VS Code, they just need to right click on the subscription and create and there will be a portal experience open for them. So remember part one, we discussed about cl uh, cloud explorer and a cluster explorer and this extension is available via uh, managed cluster by writing Kubernetes and you can go to Azure Kubernetes services and download from here. Because I have already downloaded, I will I have uninstalled and disable button. But in case of first time user, it will be um, install button available. Now we'll go through the new features we have added in this uh, cluster, a uh, cloud ex uh, explorer experience. So uh, one of my favorite, which we have built from part one of the video was the recommendation I think Scott, you did was uh, a quick command write up. So now VS Code audience doesn't need to go and open terminal to run their kubectl favorite commands. They can just right click, run kubectl command on the cluster they want to run and go get all pods. One of the advantage user can use uh, by doing this is because they don't need to set the current cluster context. It can be on the fly. So I did one for uh, TATS 125-6. I can do another one for AAD cluster. So multiple cluster contexts get passed and user can easily see how many pods are there and so on and so forth. So um, the powerful, the, one of the invisible feature which is happening under the hood is the cube login integration. So cube login is the Kubernetes has recommended AAD enabled clusters. Uh, and, and now user can right click on their AAD enabled clusters and it can go and do the whole cube login dance at the background. So your user doesn't have to go and download the tool and 
set the tools so that the Azure auth has happened for their cluster. So that's happening all invisibly at the background while we clicked run get all pods for this cluster, for this AAD cluster. So um, moving on to the second feature we have added is the Kubernetes API server uh, health checks, which is recommended. And there are three of it. One is health Z, live Z, and ready Z. So a user can now select their cluster and simply hit what they want to check. In this case, I'm checking the healthy API server uh, health. And what it'll do is do all the heavy lifting at the background, and then it'll come out that if your API server is looking fine, what's the health status, and if there will be any failure, it'll report you back. And it's similar experience, just like running it in the terminal, but instead we are using the APIs at the background to actually call and make the experience much more cleaner. In terms of managed cluster operations, we are add, we have added delete cluster and rotate cluster certificate. These are, again, one of the top uh, DevOps uh, requests we got. And delete cluster will delete your cluster. And it is, it's a, I, I won't click on this because I'll, I'll use this for other uh, demos. So um, the rotate cluster will uh, go and rotate, which is currently only available through an ARM API. So this is um, this is current. This is a powerful feature where, if your cluster certificate needs rotation, all you need to do is rotate cluster certificate, and it'll ask once you say yes, it'll go and generate the request, and it'll be automatic at the background, and user doesn't need to do anything, rather than just simple click. The last feature, which is pretty powerful, is an inspect a gadget tool, which is an eBPF set of tools which can run on the uh, Linux kernel in your uh, Kubernetes cluster and get a deep analysis of networking issues and, and other things. So uh, Inspector Gadget exists as its own tool, has its own deployment mechanism. What we have done is to start with, simplified that by simple deploy and undeploy button. So as a user, if my cluster doesn't, is, doesn't have the deployed uh, Inspector Gadget tool, they can select the deploy and all it is going to do is do all the heavy lifting and in this cluster i already had it so the gadget wasn't modified you know while you're doing that what's significant and what i think is so nice about the way that you've all integrated aks with vs code is it's a balance between trying to be a full ide which is not what VS Code is, it's a code editor. And then also just throwing them into the terminal, which you're also not doing. You're really finding this nice middle ground where we are in VS Code where we wanna live, but you, you didn't just shell into the terminal and write the command for me. But at the same time, the command is available in this rendered uh, page that you create. I think it's a really nice balance. Yeah, indeed. and. Um... I think I'll, I'll run a couple of uh, gadgets command in between so that I can show. Uh, so let's let's take the TCP to start with, uh, which is a networking package. So I'll, I'll take I'll run this against. All users need to do is select the command. Uh, currently, we have integrated non-interactive commands. Inspector Gadget comes with integrate interactive commands, which are like a, a continuous load on the VS Code. We are planning to do that in future releases, but for now, all the non-interactive uh, top use command are integrated to this uh, extension. So I have selected the TCP. It is going to. Well, it brings recent. up an interesting question. I noticed a couple of times when you were doing some things like you know get all pods. It looks like it uh, has a, a preliminary command. It calls out like to get properties. To like almost like check the status, so it's you're getting two or three commands for the price of one. Is there a way to see those commands or verbose output and see what's happening behind the scenes, like just now? Uh, this is again a really good observation. We didn't thought about exposing those because we were thinking of doing a whole lot of heavy lifting and just sandbox this for the user. But showing that as as an experience, uh, we might add that as a next upgrade. Well, you could put it in the console at the bottom because VS is really known for that named console where it's like if something's happening for a long time, you go to the output window, you say, you know, AKS tools and you go, oh, look, I see it's paused because DNS or whatever. It's always DNS uh, that could let you see the verbose if you wanted to see that background, uh, you know, log 
tail. That's actually an amazing idea. And we are going to land. Uh, Fun. Pretty, you know. Yeah, we got quite a lot of amazing ideas always from our audience in Iron yeah. Fridays and, and also from Scott as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is great though, because this is practitioner level stuff. I mean, if you just look at that, how many choices you have, you have dozen plus uh, things. And what you're doing is you're taking that top 80 or 90% of things that everybody's doing every day, all day long, cube cuddle stuff that I'm doing, and you're saving me keystrokes. You're saving me time by putting them all in one place, which I think is really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think on that note, I will uh, hand over to Rong for the documentation for Cube Login and Inspect a Gadget. And uh, I am really thankful to the community and I, I and and to this channel, actually, so that we get so many requests. And I look forward for the next upgraded versions of uh, more features. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. And I want to make sure that we encourage our viewers, go and install this because there's a real humans. You've met them. They're here on the show working on this, and they and the team can add your favorite features. If you have a great idea, share it with the team. They are listening. Let's switch over to Rong's uh, machine here. Yeah, uh, so this is our main document for the VS Code extension on IKEA, for AKS. Uh, you can see these are all our listed features. Um, you can read through all the details and to see like how each feature works, what feature is for what. Uh, we have quite a lot of features and definitely like Scott mentioned to the viewers, if you see this video, give us feedbacks, give us ideas. Definitely that's where we can, you know, we, we know how to improve this. Uh, we know like the there are a lot of like a pain points for developers who are like now using this containers using AKS service um, for the cloud infrastructure. So definitely let us know where your pain is, and then definitely we can uh, improve that. Um, yeah. So here's the link of the doc uh, for our main uh, AKS extension. And um, as Taz mentioned, we also have this powerful inspect gadget that's now embedded into this extension. Um, so you can see these are the variable target, uh, gadgets that use this eBPF program to go very deep to the Linux kernels level that um, sniffing and detecting like the data is from there. So we can call the top files and everything. So you can read um, details from here as well. And then welcome to use things like a gadget in the extension. Um, so if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Very cool. Well, folks can see all of these great tools by simply going and installing the AKS extension for Visual Studio Code, playing with it, and then going to the GitHub and getting involved, sharing issues, and communicating with the team. Thank you both, uh, Rong and Tats, for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, thank you. All right. I am learning all about the great tools we have for Visual Studio Code and AKS today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.